What's up, Strong Girls Nation? This is Caroline Garrity, and I'm a former Division I lacrosse player at Harvard College. And today, I'm gonna to be showing you just a couple of skills or tricks that you can learn just in your backyard if you just have a stick and a ball and nothing else. And a tennis ball also works, but I have a real lacrosse ball here with me. So, let's get started. because that is crucial in the game of lacrosse. So what we're gonna talk about today is using your stick and your body in order to keep away from your defender. Now, this is very, very important, especially when you're running down the field, when you're a defender, when you're an attackman, it doesn't matter what position you are on the field. This is crucial all over the field. So what I'm gonna teach you right now is just stick, stick protection. Now, stick protection is all about your body. The way that you position your body, the way that you're putting your body in between your defender or whoever's trying to get the ball from you and your stick. So I'm a righty, so this is my dominant hand right now, but we're going to show you on both sides because it's important to be able to protect your stick with both hands. And so what you're going to do is you're going to put your foot in front, your shoulder and your arm in between the defender and your stick. So this is, this is what it looks like. Do you, do you see how, if you're my defender and here's my stick, there's no way you're getting to my stick. There's no way you're getting the ball from me. And you can do it on the other side too, keeping it in your right hand, but just putting your stick on this side of your body, keeping my body in between my defender and myself. Now the same thing goes as a lefty. When you're a lefty, you just put your right foot forward and you move your body so that you still have control over your stick and you're keeping it away from your defender, but you're putting your body in between you and the defender. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is changing your stick levels. Now, this is something that I actually didn't really start learning until high school, so this is really great that you guys uh, have an introduction to this early on, especially if you've been taught this once before. So, changing your stick levels means that you have your stick up near the sphere, is what we all talk about, you know, in women's across, right? The sphere around your head. You have your stick up near your sphere, like this. You can have your stick uh, waist level, or you can have your stick down low. Now, this is really important especially since my last uh, skill that we just taught was about stick protection, this is also really crucial to be able to change your stick level. So when a defender is coming at you, you don't necessarily have your stick up near your head at all times. You can change your stick level to keep it at your waist, you can change your stick level to keep it low to the ground, and you can change in any direction. Any hand works as well. Righty, lefty, high, medium, low. All over the place. So this is really important, especially since it actually hones stick handling, cradling skills as well. So if you can cradle up here, you can cradle down near your waist and you can cradle near the ground, it really helps those wrist muscles work and work and work over and over again. Like we'll say throughout this video is repetition is key. So protecting the stick up here, changing lefty, going mid-level, going mid-level lefty and righty, and down near the ground as well, both hands. So that's just another skill that you can practice in your backyard with just a stick and a ball. Okay, and I know that we've talked about this in the last two uh, skills that I, that I just mentioned, but switching hands is so, so important in the game of lacrosse. Being able to be ambidextrous using both your right and your left hand is almost crucial, especially if you wanna make it to the collegiate level. So what we're going to talk about is changing hands, switching hands, because I know that it's not the easiest thing, especially when you're first starting out. Everybody feels most comfortable in their dominant hand. Everybody feels like they want to stay righty or they want to stay lefty, but it's really important, and this is a life lesson too, to get out of your comfort zone and to try something different and to push yourself um, in every aspect of the game, including changing your hands. So I grew up a righty, and when I first started changing hands, my coaches along the way taught me, it's like sliding from one to the next. So I'm gonna do it in slow motion and you guys can follow along. So right now I'm in my right hand and I'm cradling. And when I go to switch hands, I'm sliding this hand up, the bottom hand up the shaft, and I'm taking, taking the place of my top hand. And then it just switches like that. So it's almost just a switch. So you can see a little bit faster, this bottom hand is sliding up the shaft to, to take the place of my right hand, because my left hand will be then the dominant hand. Because as we all know, the right hand on the bottom of the stick does nothing. It just is, acts as a, as a place placeholder. And the top hand is the one that's doing all the work. It's cradling the stick, making sure that the ball stays in your pocket. So when you switch hands, it's sliding up, switching, and then now my right hand acts as that placeholder on the bottom. And practicing this both ways is really, really important, and repetition is important. I would stand in my backyard and I would just do this. I would just do this over and over again, 
and I would just make sure that the ball is not coming out of my pocket. And do you see how I get it? I cradle once and then I switch. It's just to make sure that that ball is staying in your pocket and you have complete control over it. So that's it. Okay, so something really, really important to keep in mind is that lacrosse, it's all with the hands and the stick for the most part. It is a running game, but a lot of the skills that you need involve wrist strength. And wrist strength is super, super important when you're cradling, when you're shooting, when you're passing with everything. So it's really, really important to build up that wrist strength. And you'll see, you know, in, in middle school and high school, even going into college, we continue over and over again to do drills that develop our wrist strength. So something that you can practice at home, which is something that I've done over the years, is just one hand cradling, one hand movement of the stick. So what I like to do is I'm cradling with my right hand and then I let go of the top of the stick and I move the stick down, I touch the ground, and I bring it back up. And you can do it slow, so you can really accentuate it a, a lot like this, or you can do it fast and you can see how fast you can do it without the ball falling out. And it takes a lot of restraint to continue to keep on doing this. You'll feel it in your wrist as you go down, touching the ground and bringing it back up. And doing it on both sides too, so now I'm a lefty, and now I bring the stick down, I touch the ground and I bring it back in. And when I do bring it back in, it's really important to keep in mind to bring it back in and to get a really good cradle in because when you catch or when you pick up a ground ball or when you throw, you're bringing it back into your stick and you're immediately protecting your stick from whoever's trying to get the ball from you. So doing this over and over again, practicing your strength, bring it down, bring it up, and then cradle it. Another really, really important skill to practice with wrist strength is something that you do if you take the draw. Now, I know not all of you who are watching this take the draw, but it's a really important skill to practice even if you're put in that position to take the draw. Growing up, I always took the draw, and then when I got to high school, I didn't take it for a little bit, and then when I got to college, I took it again. So you never know when you're on the circle, when you're taking the draw, or even if the ball flies up in the air and it goes into the defensive or the attacking zone, it's really important to practice. So what you're going to do is you're going to toss the ball up to yourself, and you're gonna release just one hand, whatever hand you prefer, righty or lefty, depending on how you take the draw, one hand is always off the stick. And you're going to catch the ball when it's at its peak in the air. So when you toss the ball up, you're gonna to toss it up, one hand, catch, bringing it, bringing it in, and immediately bringing it into a tight cradle. So I'm gonna do it again. I'm tossing it up with my left hand, and then I'm catching it with my right because that's how I took the draw. And so you toss it up, you catch, you immediately, do you see all this restraint that you have to have in order to catch the ball way up high up in the air? At its peak, what we like to say, bringing it in and immediately getting into a tight cradle. And you can practice both hands if you don't know which way you, that you take the draw or if you want to just practice both wrists, but that's perfectly fine as well. And you can practice both righty and lefty, tossing it up in the air and catching it to yourself. So we've been talking a lot about the ball being in the air, us cradling, us working on our wrist strength and moving our body in order to protect our stick. Now what we're gonna talk about is if the ball's not in the air, but instead it's on the ground, which happens a lot in the game of lacrosse, as we all know. And knowing how to properly pick up a ground ball is so crucial when it comes even to a higher level game, such as the coll collegiate level. Now, we don't pick the ball up with one hand, we don't rake the ball because that takes way too much time and we need to pick up the ball quick and get going because somebody is obviously going to be chasing you and wants the ball too. So when the ball's on the ground, something to keep in mind is to also get your body low. People always think, oh, you know, you're running full speed, how do you get your body so low? That just takes a lot of strength and conditioning in order to get your body low in picking up the ball in your stride essentially. So it's about positioning and it's about really driving through the ball and maintaining that speed as you go through. So when the ball's on the ground and I'm running to go pick it up, I'm going down, I'm a righty, but I can show lefty as well. And I go down and I get my stick to a level that's not quite parallel to the ground, it's not quite level with the ground, but it's pretty close so that when I scoop the ball and I have it in my stick, you see how my lead foot is my right? I immediately, almost like a sprint, almost like when you start sprinting on the track, you immediately push off and you get going away from the defender that's behind you. So when the ball's on the ground, and even if it's still rolling, even if it's not stationary, you go through, you get down, you pick up, and you get going. So that is the key to picking up a ground ball, is maintaining your speed, getting low enough so that you're not stabbing at the ground or that you're just going to miss the ball, Make, making sure that you get low enough, making sure that you maintain your speed going through, and then the last thing that I'll say is when you do pick up the ball, keep it in front of you and close to you, in the sense that do not pick up the ball and then immediately bring your stick back here because there's someone behind you that's going to check your stick and get the ball. 
So when you go through, maintain your speed, get low, and immediately tuck it, keep it close to you, and keep going. Okay, so another really, really important thing about the game of lacrosse is the aspect of dodging. Now, dodging, you're able to get beyond a defender, you're able to make it down the middle of the field, you'll be able to finish the ball in the back of the net. Dodging is all across the field, no matter what position that you play. So an important thing to keep in mind is that we're at home. We don't have a person to, to defend us. We don't have, generally, we don't have uh, cones or anything. So what I'm using right here is a rock that I found in my backyard to dodge. Now, things that I've done in the past, I've used a leaf, I've used rocks, I've used a tree. If you have a tree in your backyard, you can use that as a defender, but no matter what it is, you just have to imagine it as an obstacle that you have to get beyond. It doesn't have to be a person at all. It can be just something as simple as a rock, like I'm using right here, uh, because I do not have access to cones, or I, I could go to a tree, but I think that this would, this would work to show you the basics. Now, there are three types of dodges that you've probably heard about. There's the face dodge, the split dodge, and the roll dodge. Now, depending on the position that you play, some dodges will work better, some dodges you'll use more, and it's all about personal preference in the end. I, for one, really like the split dodge, and it's because I was a midfielder. I was used to changing my hands all the time when I was in the midfield and the defensive and offensive zones. A lot of the times, attackers will use roll dodges because they're coming from behind the net and trying to get in front of the net, so they'll have to roll their body back and forth. Um, and then defenders just like the, the face dodge because all they're trying to do is get the ball down the field. Um, but again, it's personal preference depending upon your position and the dodge that you feel most com comfortable doing. But I'm just going to give you a quick rundown on all three because I know that most of you have heard of these before. Um, but the first one that we're going to show you is the face dodge. Now the face dodge is pretty simple. What it is is you go up to your defender, which is my nice rock here, and you go up to your defender and you're not switching hands. All you're doing is faking one way, and I'm in my right hand right now, you're faking to the left, and you're going to the right. So when you're coming up to a defender uh, in the middle of the field, and you just want to quickly get by them without doing much of, 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 a, of a movement, all you're doing is just a quick fake and moving in the same direction that you're planning on going. So you're keeping your stick in your dominant hand, whether that's righty or lefty, this is the left hand side now. I'm going to fake to the right and move to the left so that I keep my stick in my dominant hand. So this is me again, I go up and I quick fake and I plant my foot as if I'm gonna go this way. So my defender thinks that I'm going to the left, but then I move to the right. The split dodge, which is my favorite dodge, is when you actually do change your hands and you do fake out your defender thinking that they're gonna go one way and then splitting and going the opposite. Then you can do a double, a double split dodge and all of these different things. You can mix it up a little bit. You can stutter step with it. Everybody has their own style, but with the split dodge, it's the exact same thing, but you're actually switching your hands so that you're really getting the stick away from your defender. In the sense that I go up, I'm in my right hand now, I go up and I fake this way, and rather than just tucking and going the other way, I fake this way and I change my hands and I explode in the other direction. The benefit of doing a split dodge is one, you really use both of your hands. You use your right and your left hand, which is crucial in the game of lacrosse, but also I'm really getting my stick away from my defender. I go up and I fake to the right. I go to the to the left and I change my hands and my defender is now here and my stick is the furthest possible point away from them. So I really, really protect my stick. So that is a benefit to using the split dodge. And again, like I said, it's just practicing using both hands. So it's good to practice even if you do prefer the face dodge. Um, the last dodge is what a lot of attackers use. Like I say, if you watch any attacker video, they'll probably show you the roll dodge most often. So. What you're going to do, you're going to go up, I'm again with my right hand, you're going to go up and you're actually, instead of planting your right foot, which is what we, what we do with the face dodge and the split dodge, instead of planting the right foot and going to the left, what you're actually going to do, you're going to go up to your defender and you're going to plant your left foot. So you're going to go up, I'm a righty, I'm going towards the right hand side and I plant my left foot and what I then do with the roll dodge is I roll. So I go this way and I end up with my left hand. You can keep it in your right hand. I prefer to switch, like I said, but you can go up and plant your left foot because essentially what you're trying to do is you're trying to get your body to turn around. So you want to put this foot down first, the left foot down, if you're going to the right, and then you just swing your body around and move this way. Now you can imagine, and I'm going to move over to the net here, you can imagine that when I'm a attackman and I'm going around the net, 
as a lot of attack men do. I'm going around and I am coming up and the defender is here and I'm swinging, I'm swinging, I plant my foot, I tuck and look at this, I'm right in front of the net. So a lot of attack men use this move because it's really, really effective and it's a great way to quickly get to the net and protecting your stick with your body up against the defender. So again, this is just the roll dog. You plant, you spin, you roll, and you go. So those are three basic dodges that you can use and you can add your own little flair to all of them. I liked adding a little bit of flair to mine because it makes it more fun and it really keeps the defender on their toes. But these are three really important dodges that you can use in your game and to practice them over and over again is really crucial, especially if you just have a stick, a ball, and a rock. Okay, so we just went through a bunch of skills and tricks that you can do just in your backyard if you have a ball and a stick and no one around, but there's another option for all of you guys. If you live anywhere near a wall, so right now I'm right at my elementary school, which is somewhere that I would go all the time when I was growing up in elementary school and in high school to bounce the ball off of a wall because I know that a lot of you don't have bounce back machines. I never had one growing up. So if you have the ability to get to a wall so that you can take the ball and practice up against a wall, that is a really, really great way to practice your lacrosse skills, both right hand and left hand. So right now I'm going to be showing you a couple of wall ball techniques that I've learned over the years and let's get started. Okay guys, here's the wall in front of me right here. Now what I like to do is I like to pick a place on the wall and imagine myself hitting it every single time so that you have the accuracy down and you know exactly where the ball is gonna come back to you. Now, I'm in my right hand right now because this is my dominant hand, but you should be practicing wall ball with both hands because everybody in lacrosse should be ambidextrous. You should be able to go both righty and lefty. So right now I'm gonna pick a spot on the wall, I'm gonna bounce the ball and it's gonna come right back to me. Now, you can do a couple of different things. You can take the ball, bounce it back and cradle a little bit and get the ball uh, you get the feel of the ball in your stick once you catch it or what you can do you can catch immediately take it back and go again so a quick stick almost so you catch bring it back catch bring it back catch bring it back so there's two different methods to do it there okay so this is now my left hand so again just switching sides same exact thing as the right picking a spot on the wall right here putting your elbow back I always like to say that you want to kiss your shoulder that's the that's how I was raised growing up, all my coaches telling me to kiss my, sh kiss my shoulder, bringing it back, throwing it up against the wall, catching it, cradling it, bringing it in, having control of the ball, and then pulling it back and doing it exactly the same way. Okay guys, so I just showed you a couple of skills that you can practice using the wall, but something that I like to do is I like to say, okay, how many times can I hit the ball up against the wall in 30 seconds? Or how many times can I catch the ball playing wall ball without making a mistake? There are little games that you can play to help hone your skills over and over again. And like I said, repetition is key. You know, as we all say, practice makes perfect. So the more that you practice with both your right and your left hand, I know that using your non-dominant hand is difficult, but the more that you practice, the easier it will become. And it's really, really important to practice over and over again, the same drill over and over so that you can perfect it. And if you have a wall near you, I would highly recommend using it to your advantage. So these are just things that you can do in your backyard, skills that you can hone while you're in your backyard with just a stick and a ball. But something I'd also like to mention is that even if you want to go play soccer with your friends, that's awesome, or basketball with your friends, that's great, especially when the warm weather's coming out and everyone wants to be outside. But even if you want to go for a run, if you want to just take a run down the street, a mile, two miles, whatever your distance is, what I always did was I brought my stick with me. So whenever I went to go for a run, whether it was a mile, three miles, whatever it is, I brought my stick with me because it was a way that I could run with my stick and really get a feel for the stick in my hand to make sure that I was very, very comfortable on the move running. A lot of the things that I just showed you is a lot of stationary work, a lot of things just focusing on the hands, the wrists, the control of the ball. But lacrosse is a running game. It is a fast paced moving game. So all the things that I just showed you, you should be able to do at full speed. So a lot of things that you can do um, that involve running is to go for a run with a stick, doing these activities that I showed you on the move. Uh, we showed a little bit with the ground ball situation, but things that you can do even outside of just being in your backyard with a ball and a stick is going for a run with your stick. It's something that I really found very, very helpful when I was in middle school and high school and really just making sure my skills were up to the best caliber that I could have going into college.
Okay, Strong Girls Nation, this is it for me today, but just keep working on those skills, get outside, have a stick and a ball in your hand, and if your goal is to make the varsity team in high school or to eventually make it to the collegiate level playing lacrosse, then you have to put in the work, you have to practice every day, and to practice all of these skills that we talked about today, and most importantly, as I always say, to have fun, because the game of lacrosse is very, very fun, and it's really fun being out here playing with everybody, and practicing these skills and being the best player that you can be. So good luck and have fun.